research la scientific director with Ziva Fertility Centers. What is the hydrosalpinx and how is it responsible for causing infertility? is what we are going to discuss today. Well, before understanding a hydrosalpinx, we need to understand that there are two tubes attached to a uterus on either side. And these tubes open onto ovaries, which when release an egg, are caught on by the end of the tube and the egg can then wait in the tube for sperms for fertilization to happen there. So you can understand that the tubes play a very important role in fertilization and therefore pregnancy. Any damage to the tubes can result in infertility or be a cause of infertility. So what is a hydrosalpinx? Any damage or blockage inside the tube may cause fluid filled inside the tubes which is called as a hydrosalpinx. Now this hydrosalpinx in itself can block a tube, can cause partial damage to the tube, can uh, block it partially. Also the fluid can cause a backflow of this fluid which is accumulated inside the hydrosalpinx back into the uterus. This fluid into the uterus is not a good sign and can cause non-implantation as in the embryo that has formed may not implant in the uterus because of the presence of this fluid. So it's very important to understand and assess the size, the effect of the hydrosalpinx which is present. These hydrosalpinx can be present on either side or only one side. They can be caused due to a previous injury, previous infection, previous surgery. All these can lead to hydrosalpinx and may damage or cause an hydrosalpinx to be present. Are there any symptoms? Hydrosalpinx do not uh, cause much symptoms. But sometimes when there is a backflow of the fluid into the uterus, it may cause a little bit of irritation and therefore may result in a little pain to the patient. Hydrosalpinx are also responsible for ectopic pregnancies as in when the tube is blocked, egg is released and somehow the sperm fertilizes the egg, they may cause an issue where the embryo cannot come back into the uterus and form a baby, therefore it results in ectopic pregnancy. Hydrosalpinx should be addressed in such conditions. So how will your doctor diagnose a hydrosalpinx? To begin with, since I said that there are not many symptoms of hydrosalpinx, they will do a regular uh, test to find out what is causing your infertility. So the first test to assess the tubes and the uterus. So the easiest test to assess the tubes are a hysterosalpingogram where a special dye is passed into your uterus and this dye flows out of the tubes on either side. If there is a partial blockage then the dye does not come out or if there is a blockage the dye does not come out at all. So this uh, helps us uh, conclude that there is a blockage in the tubes or there is a hysteroscopy procedure a procedure where there is a scope that is passed into the uterus and also the tubes are assessed to see if there are any blockages the gold standard for assessing tubal blockages or to address hydrosalpinx are the laparoscopy procedures now laparoscopy is a very simple procedure where small holes are made on your abdomen and as the name suggests a small telescope or a laparoscope is passed into your abdomen not only the abdomen but also the tubes uterus everything can be assessed to see if problem can be solved it is a gold standard for hydrosalpinx can you have a baby if you have a hydrosalpinx well it depends on the extent of damage that the hydrosalpinx has caused if the tubes are totally blocked then your chances of having a baby naturally are minimal to none or even with IUI it may not be very fruitful also if there is backflow then with these treatments the treatment may not be very useful IUI or trying naturally so it's very critical to understand the extent of damage that the hydrosalpinx has caused coming to the procedures that solve this problem hysteroscopy can be converted into a operative hysteroscopy from a diagnostic one as in a diagnostic is when the telescope is passed into your uterus to see what the problem is and if the problem is present it can be converted into an operative hysteroscopy and it can be resolved a laparoscopy is also a procedure where the issue can be solved in the same sitting if there is a blockage the blockage can be removed a dye can be passed to assess if there are blockages and if there is a hydrosalpinx that can be removed that also can be done with laparoscopy but if there is too much damage if you your tube had to be removed uh, because of the damage and both your tubes are blocked then the option left for you is an IVF pregnancy where the eggs are stimulated inside the ovaries they are brought out under the effect of anesthesia it's a very simple procedure then mixed with your partners or husband's sperms embryos are created and a few good embryos are placed back into your uterus as you can see the tubes are of no use here and 
the pregnancy can be achieved depending on your age and other factors which are taken into account to calculate your success rate if you want to understand more if you have been diagnosed with hydrosalpings or blocked fallopian tubes please feel free to contact us thank you a lot of effort has gone into making this video please like and subscribe us thank you